All right, students and children of all ages, we have a standard application for employment. This assignment is about finding out what the question boxes are asking for, how to complete it, why to complete it, and, and going from there. So I'm going to start going through the parts of a job application. These may change based on the job, the form template that a job uses. This may be completed on paper. It may be completed online. Um, first period class, we had 50-50 students who had jobs. One of them applied for their current position on paper. The other one applied for a previous position online. So it's important to have this template filled out so that way, whether you're looking at a computer and typing in the information, you have something to look at. It's important to have this, whether you're there at the employer's office and you're trying to fill out the application in paper right there on site. You want a cheat sheet. So here we go. Let's go into the steps. Okay. So there may be slight differences within each setup, each application, but the general information will most likely be the same. Employer. This is the employer that you intend to work for. And one little note, these boxes are small. If you have terrible handwriting like myself, you want to practice writing out the employer's name. You may not write that on your example, but you might want to practice making sure. When I got employed at Marysville Joint Unified School District, that's a lot to fit in one little box. So you, you might have to practice it. Position applying for. Make sure you've looked at the job uh, flyer or the posting and make sure that you know what the position is for. You could put any available or all positions available and, and that would be a great way to let them know that you're open for many different opportunities. Personal data. This is an area that gets confusing and or if you have a typo, it can be it can be uh, both embarrassing and or prevent you from getting the job. For example, let's say you you put down your cell phone number incorrectly, and some people don't know it because they don't call their own number, and we don't necessarily leave our number until we're an adult and we need somebody to call us back right away. So things like numbers. Those, those can be really important to make sure you have correct, especially if they're going to call you for an interview. It's important to pay attention to things like last, first, and middle name. These things are there, and they're not always the same. Sometimes it says name, and you just fill in your name. Sometimes it's implied that it's first and last name. But you want to make sure you follow what they are asking for one of the very first signs of a possibly hireable employee is whether they can follow the basic directions in front of them. And if you're like me and your handwriting's terrible and you're nervous about fitting it in this whole space right here, you, you might want to practice it, write it out. Street address and, and or mailing address, if this has changed, at any point, you need to put it there. One of the reasons why some people who uh, are homeless have an issue with applying for jobs is because they don't have a mailing address. So maybe you need to find somebody who will let you collect mail at your address. City, state, make sure you're capitalizing things. Make sure you're spelling them correctly. Home telephone number. If you do not have a home phone that is connected to a landline, then you can either put your own cell phone or leave it blank. 
And then over here, you might put your cell phone number as well. Business telephone number. This isn't the business that you're applying for. This is if you have a business and you are searching for a, a position and maybe maybe you're a contractor and you're looking for a job at a, uh, build, a home building company. Date you can start work. This is really important. Look at your calendar. Check. Make sure there's not a, a school event. Make sure you don't have a, a an appointment. And make sure you can start on that date. This is referring to sometimes when you already have a position working somewhere else, the respectful standard is a two-week notice. So if I am quitting working at Taco Bell, I am going to give a two-week notice. That means I would not be available to start my job at McDonald's for two weeks. That might change, but I'm going to give myself a, and my future employer two weeks to be prepared to have me be employed. I'm also going to give my former employer two weeks to hire someone new to replace me. So there's a lot there. If you know you have a vacation or a holiday or an appointment, don't make the start date at that point or right before that point because it might mess up your onboarding at the new job. Salary desired. I know that as a teacher teaching for so many years, I should expect a salary within a certain range. As a new uh worker in the workforce, you wouldn't necessarily be applying for a salary position. So you could leave that blank. Zip code, make sure you know your zip code, cell phone number, make sure you sp spell it all out too, or type it all out. Don't just put your, you know, 749-19 or 749-6918, but make sure you put the area code. Do you have a high school diploma? No, you do not. So put no. Position information. Check all that you are willing to work. So willing to work and being able to with a work permit might be different. Hours. You, you can only work part-time on a work permit. Days or evenings. Well, probably evenings because you're in school during the day. Swing, graveyard, or weekends. I would mark weekends because as a student, you can't work swing or graveyard. Swing is, I think, 6 p.m. or to midnight around there, five, 4 to midnight. Graveyard would be midnight to 6 a.m., that type of a thing. If you can get a job where you can get a lot of hours each weekend, that's the way to go. And then status, regular or temporary. My son is currently working a temporary position. He hopes that it will become regular. You may hope that your position becomes regular. If it's close to the holiday season, you may mark temporary. You may only be willing to work during the holiday season. We had a student that worked at the pumpkin patch. That was a temporary position, I believe. So this question right here, are you authorized to work in the U.S. on an unrestricted basis? This is a complicated question, and I, as your teacher, need not know the answer to this. What do I mean by that? This question is asking, do you have either a Social Security card that says you can work here or a green card that it has some restrictions to it. Please do not make jokes about a green card or anything like that. This is a serious matter. And as an employer, I might be able to ask this question because I need to know about taxes and situations like that. And to know that all of my employees have the correct documentation for being employed. 
But as a teacher, I cannot ask you if you have U.S. citizenship, which means do you have a Social Security card slash Social Security card number? I cannot ask that because as a school, I have to serve and educate all students regardless of their citizenship status. So I am not asking you, do you have a, a, a citizenship? I am not asking you if you have a social security number. I cannot access nor ask you for that information as a teacher. As a school, we do not hold this information. So one of this is implying or asking, do you have a social security number? Again, I cannot ask you that and I cannot provide you that. So when I say that some of this information may need to be filled out at home, I can provide you with a printout copy of this and or a, um, a reminder of somehow, but I can't get that information for you. You need to find that out out from your home. And that can be very difficult. Sometimes some people don't live with their parent or guardian. Some people are staying with somebody else for a variety of reasons. Uh, there may have been a situation where a fire or a flood or homelessness or what have you took your documentation, wherever your social security card might be. So this is not necessarily easy information to get. And it might take you a little bit of effort outside of class to fill out some of this information. But I cannot access that. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Convictions will not necessarily disqualify an application for employment. If yes, explain. Be brief be truthful because failure to answer questions correctly or honestly on a job application. If you say no and you have, sorry, if you say no and you have in fact been convicted of a felony, they can terminate your employment even if you've been working there for 10 years. If you've been working for, for 10 years and all of a sudden they go, wait a minute, when you filled out this application, you had indeed been in, uh, convicted of a felony prior to completing this application and you marked no, they can fire you on the spot, on the spot, no questions asked. So you have to be honest on there and you never want to be caught in a spot where you weren't honest and it comes back to bite you. Have you been told the essential functions of the job or have you viewed a copy of the job description listing the essential functions of the job? Yes or no? You absolutely want to look at the requirements or job description. One, to see if you meet those qualifications. Two, See if you want to do that type of job. And three, to make sure you are capable of doing that type of job. If you know you are not able to lift items that are over 50 pounds, and that is the primary function of the job is to stock heavy items onto shelves or onto a conveyor or remove them from a conveyor, then you won't be able to do that job. Now, there may be reasonable accommodations. For example, you may not be able to stand for eight hours at a conveyor belt, but maybe you could sit on a high stool at a conveyor belt, that type of a thing. There are a lot of other accommodations that could be considered reasonable. Qualifications. This is one of the difficult parts to fill out when you are a student. You may not have, you may not think you have qualifications. Well, the good news is most entry level positions do not require you to be highly qualified. However, let's say you want a job at a restaurant or fast food chain. You may put food handlers or 
uh, introduction to nutrition. You might not have a degree. You might not, you know, you might put the school's address, but it doesn't mean you don't have anything as far as a qualification. Special skills. List any special skills or experience. This says list, not write out. So you might, you might be okay with just listing special skills, honesty, punctuality, integrity, or uh, maybe you have practice with engine uh, dismantling, or maybe you have practice with welding, that type of a thing. Notice it even says leadership, organization, teams, etc. So you might, you might put that leadership led class discussions. Leadership was the captain of basketball team, things like that. Those are special skills. References. This is one of the most important things you can do correctly on the application that I myself as a grown adult do not have this information even in my cell phone in my back pocket. I would have to contact people to be my reference, which you should do anyways, but to make sure you have their correct address and their correct contact phone number, this is important because these are the people that the employer will call to see if you are an employable person. If you put, I have great uh, punctuation or great punctuality, I have great organization skills. This person who you list here may be asked, you know, can you describe a time that they, they exhibited great ex, uh, organization skills? Something like that. Have you tell me a time you have seen them work in a kitchen? Whatever you're applying for, the questions might change. And you want this person, whoever you list here, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. You want this person to know that you are listing them as a reference so that they're not caught off guard and so that they answer the phone when Joe Schmuckatelli's office calls. You also want to be on an understanding with that individual that they will give you a positive reference. Do not list Mr. Wright if you don't know that I will give you a positive reference. If, if somebody calls and asks about my student, Joe Schmuckatelli, I'm going to say, well, Joe Schmuckatelli was late. He had attitude and uh, he just wasn't uh, flexible that kind of a thing. I'm going to be honest. Or I might not remember you. So if in a year and a half, you put me down as a reference, I might need a reminder. So make sure the person is going to be a positive reference and you have good up-to-date contact information. Work history. You may not have any. That's okay. You may just write babysitter, you know, and when you started, when you ended, present. If you have not ended being a babysitter, you would write present. If you are currently working at Taco Bell and you want to work at McDonald's, you would write work history when you started at Taco Bell and current, or sorry, you would write present as in to this present day. Don't worry about your supervisor's name for work history. They cannot contact a previous employer and ask the same questions that a reference could be asked. They can only ask, did you work there from these dates to these dates? They might be able to ask a very few simple questions. Other than that, all they can do is confirm, yes, you worked there. Yes, you have work history at this place. They cannot ask your supervisor their opinion on your work or your quality of work. So don't be dishonest on here. Don't complete it because you didn't like that boss or you thought that supervisor was a, a jerk or hated you. And so you don't want them to talk to your future employer. That's not how this works. 
this section, all they can do is contact and see, did you work there from this time to this time? And I think in what capacity? So if you put job title plumber, I worked there from here to here, and they call my former school and say, uh, did Mr. Wright work there from this date to this date? And my uh, supervisor says, yes, yes, Niels Wright did work here from that date to that date. And my employer, my future employer, my prospective hopeful employer says, was he a plumber? They're going to go, wait, what? No, no, that isn't the position he, he held here. So that means I don't have work history as a plumber. I have work history at that job doing something else. So I think those questions can be asked. And you want to be clear and concise as possible. If it was laborer, put laborer. If it was kitchen staff, you put kitchen staff. If it was hostess, you put hostess or host. Brief job duties that highlight what you did at that job. So special education, uh, teacher, documentation, that kind of a thing. Reason for leaving. This is a respectful, responsible, honest reason. I will talk about those reasons at another time when we address a letter called um, a letter of resignation where you resign, you quit. So we're, we're going to talk contact or sorry, we're going to talk about reason for leaving. I would, uh, for example, the season position ended or um, to pursue education, took a break from employment to pursue education or change of career field or uh, looking or seeking position closer to home, things like that. Starting salary. If you worked hourly, you might write $11 slash hour. Or, or in my case, I had a previous job. It was only $35,000. I would write $35,000. Not D-O-L-L-A-R-S, just the symbol the dollar sign and 35,000 ending salary. I, when I started, I started at 35. When I ended there, I, I ended at 39,000. So that's good to know. Cause they, they see that you have increased your salary or that you, uh, what, what they're looking at possibly starting you out as may we contact your present employer this yes or no is uh important and i have to find out information on this one whether when you answer when you answer that what what that means what whether they can contact as a reference or just contact entirely and if you don't have other job history you only put the most recent one first and then work previous so one summer you did a job that would be down here this summer you did a new job, a different job, or or the same job at a different place, and then current, you know, currently you're working at such and such place. I certify that the facts set forth in this application for employment are true and complete to the best of my knowledge. I understand that if I am employed, false statements, omissions, or misrepresentations. Omissions means a lie by not stating something. So if I say I went to the store and came home and I didn't mention that I went somewhere else, I just didn't mention it, then I am lying by omission. I am omitting the fact that I went somewhere else. If I omit the fact, like I just... Don't put, um, I, I don't answer this question, right? I just don't answer it. That is a lie through omission. If I say yes to something, that is a lie and, uh, or a misrepresentation. 
and it may result in dismissal. That means fired. That's what I was stating before. I authorize the employer to make an investigation of any of the facts set forth in this application. That means they can call previous employers to see if this fact and this fact is correct. Your start date and your end date is correct. That the duties that you performed there were correct. That the salary you left at was correct. I can't start teaching and say, well, I got 100000 at my last job. That won't fly. So I acknowledge and understand, oh, sorry, set forth in this application and release the employer from any liability. That means I cannot hold them liable for what they find on here. The employer may contact any listed references on this application. I acknowledge and understand that the company is an at-will employer. So this means I can employ you at will and dismiss you or fire you at will. That means you do not have a contract that says you are employed for an entire year. It means without reason, without much warning, they can fire you at will. But it also means you are an at will employee, which means you also can quit without being a obliged to complete a contract. I am not an at-will employee. My former position was even as a teacher. That's why I was able to jump ship and come over to community day school because my former employer was an at-will employer. They did not hold me to a contract and I did not hold them to a contract. Therefore, any employee, regular, temporary, or other type of category employee may resign at any time, just as the employer may terminate the employment relationship with the employee at any time with or without cause. That means they don't have to tell you. With or without notice to the other party. They don't have to give you a heads up. They can just simply say, sorry, you're fired. So, um, and then you want to sign it. This is in that fancy cursive. Maybe practice your signature so it's consistent. So this is a job application. These are the parts of the application. And you want to have a at least one, if not a couple, practice applications. For this class, we'll end up with three standard applications as an example. Do the best you can, fill in what you can, go home or to your guardians, call them on the phone, whatever you got to do to find out some of this information. Because the more complete this is, the better you will do. Simply turning it into Mr. Wright as an assignment and say, I couldn't figure it out, I didn't know, isn't going to fly. Now, I understand you might not have a lot of uh, job experiences, this work history. So put down our school. Your school right now is your work history. Put that down. Put down the information for your last school. If you do not have a place of employment, put down your junior high. Why? For the sake of practicing filling it out and because you don't have anything else to put there. As you gain job experience or, or uh, you, you've worked somewhere, you will then erase that information and add the new information or bump it down. So your junior high experience might end up being job num title, title number four. I have my current work here. I have another work, the school I worked at before here, the county of offices of education that I worked for before that. Then I worked at a, a residential housing for kids who were considered emotionally disturbed, and I could put that there. So it goes back. If I didn't have 
that job, I might put my pest control job that I only did for two months. Why? Because that's in order. Or my Navy days before college, that kind of a thing. But you want this to be as accurate a reflection of your experience and the timeline as possible. Okay, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please ask them. Remember to save and or make sure your application is saved. And then also make sure that you have shared it with Mr. Wright. Make sure that you have saved it in your drive. So download it, save it into both of your drives. This is very important. You will need a printout copy of this completed. You will need a shared completed version in the classroom assignment, as well as a uh, printout version to go in your portfolio file in our classroom. And one copy saved in both your Google Drives, your MJUSD school drive, and your personal slash professional school uh, Google Drive. It is important to have copies everywhere of all of this stuff. Get in the process of copy, copy, copy. Why? So that way it's there when you need it and you can find it when you need it. If you don't have access to one source for whatever reason, you have access to it somewhere else. That's the goal. That's the purpose. That's why we're practicing. So that way you are prepared. All right, now I'm going to officially end. Uh, pop quiz question at the end here. Uh, what do you write for? What do you write for? Can you perform these essential functions of the job with or without accommodations? How do you mark that? All right. Thank you and goodbye.